welcome to giving them the business. You know what I'm saying? I'm Chris Gotti Lorenzo. Here's my partner, Don De Niro. Hola, you already know me. And we're here to give you guys the business. We're just trying to educate and empower you guys with information, knowledge on all business, not just music business. And we will have different guests, you know, to come and just bring that to life and just keep it going. You know what I'm saying? No one better than for me for, to do it with than, than Don De Niro because he has so many different values that he adds to my life that we're going to hear the longer we go, you're going to hear more and more about. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, I mean, I think the, one of the purpose we, we kind of, Chris and I came up with this idea is to we're always trying to educate and empower the masses and now with technology and things change. Every year there's something new. And we think the podcast would be the way that we can give you guys a message and 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 kind of give you the business. And get that voice out there. Definitely. And on that note, Chris, you know, getting getting right into it. Um, I know you know something that you created. You're a creator. Everything in your life you've created from helping create Murder Inc. and all the other different situations. But I, I, if I'm not mistaken, in 2013 or 14, but well, when it came out, I think you had an idea. Let's the go back to the, the ideas in 07. Okay, well, let's, let's get into an idea in 07 that you had to when it finally came to birth. And, uh, you know, sometimes when, you, um, when you're building and you're trying to create, your vision could be way in front of what reality is today. And I could even talk about, like, I know the hot topic is uh, NFTs and right. things of that nature, even crypto. Right. And I tell everyone crypto is coming. It's just not here yet. When you go to McDonald's and buy a, Mc, Mc, uh, a, a Big Mac, fries and a drink with some Bitcoin, oh, it's on and popping, baby. Yeah. It's on I mean, and popping. You know, Until to then, you. we're not ready yet. It's coming. It's just not here yet. See, when I listen to you speak, you know, to me, words are so important. And I realize in the last maybe five to 10 years, there's been words added to our vocabulary that we didn't use before. Right. And you're looking at Instagram, you're looking at Bitcoin, you're looking at cryptocurrency, you're looking at, uh, what is metaverse. it now? The metaverse. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking at NFTs, you're looking at all these different type of vocabularies that not only us as entrepreneurs and, and people in the music industry, we try to educate ourselves to be able to, to understand so yeah, a lot of things have changed. And, and one, of, one of the things that you've brought, getting back to, to, to your baby, Adventure Music in 2007, that idea. That idea. Is tell the people how you came up with an idea way before now, there's a lot of digital companies, we'll get into that, but the idea of creating Adventure Music to help all independent artists. Well, you know, in 07, again, we weren't ready. The world's not ready to be independent in 07. The world's still technically not ready in 2022. Right. So just understand that. But it's it's absolutely the future. Absolutely the next part of this music uh entrepreneur, artist, independence, owning everything, owning their music, owning their masters, and creating their own digital currencies, the whole thing. It's all part of where the music industry is going and very important. And all I did was I just took that idea and I went in 15, after 07, eight years later, I turned it to live. Now it's real, it's reality. And I mean, when we go in, if you just check all of the historical numbers of other companies that came after that, I mean, it's a lot that came after Adventure Music, you know, and the birth of Adventure Music, which something in my world has always been, um, very uh, prevalent was whenever me or my brother, we did something in in any industry we did, we seen all of the other people following and doing it. And that's what I feel I see today. I'm still far in front of uh, these other companies from an adventure music standpoint because of what you get versus what you get from other companies. I don't knock any of these companies because it's all about the, bet and, uh, the empowerment of an independent artist. So if you're over at TuneCore and you're putting your music out, great, good luck, God bless. You'll still end up at Adventure Music because we offer things they cannot or will not. And that's the difference. And that's because I've already thought about these things from an artist perspective, not from Adventure Music perspective. And that to me is the key 
for Adventure Music and why we will always stay in the front because my business isn't predicated on Adventure Music. It's predicated on every independent artist that is out there and what they need and how can I empower them? How can I help them? Again, with realistic goals to get to there, not just saying it because, again, it's very difficult to do what we're doing to empower independent artists. I, I think that, that in my personal, you've been an innovator since even the, the, the deals you were able to do with your brother over at Def Jam with Leo Cohen at the time, revolutionized artists and help artists like Jay and other artists to get joint ventures at the time that mm. artists weren't getting and become <clears throat> owners, right? The key is owning. Your brother today owns his masters because of the kind of deals that you guys put together over there, right? Sure. 25, 30 years later. So um, you went from uh, noticing the industry kind of rape and pillage the artists <laughs> and fight for guys like Ja. And when you mentioned stories that the labor wanted you to go against your own artists, she was like, no way, we're paying these people what Absolutely. they deserve. Without them, we don't have. I think you were in an era, I lived that era, but the era that you came and were extremely successful in mm -hmm. was still a rape and pillage era. You guys were still able to keep artists that were loyal out of because you took care of your artists. That Was that kind of the, the springboard to say, hey, when you were ready, when you kind of went through all that and then you created that venture music, and then after that, you know, the distro kids of today, the United Masters of today, mm -hmm. the equities of today that give free distribution, you still were able to see that back then. Yeah. So how is that vision to say, hey, there has to be something better and technology has helped us because without, think about when we started our venture music to where we are today, technology wise, everything you went through, you know what I'm saying? We're so still kind of going explain through. to the people, like, no, it kind of explain to people that the <laughs> purpose of this is Chris is on a mission to really, you know, educate and empower the independent artists and, you know, explain to how, you know, how you kind of went through all that. You see you in a great situation. Well, you know, you, you, touch, you touched on some of the stuff that is the foundation of why I created Adventure Music, which is the CEOs that we dealt with was very pro record label. They was never pro artists. And we would say, the artists are making the money. Why aren't they getting a better piece of the deal? And their answer was always, forget your artist, get another artist, and they'll take the deal you we're going to give them. And that was the bottom line, which to me made no sense. And I know Irv didn't make, it made no sense to Irv at all either. And uh, it was always the challenge from record label versus artists. And you felt it. And now we're, we're a joint venture <clears throat> with artists <laughs> that is signed to us. And we have a 50-50 with the label. So we're caught smack right in the middle of all of the, that controversial business dealing, which we did, again, our but history. But did that put you firsthand to see how the monster thought, right? Like how they thought and how they really think about artists. How they really felt about artists, right. how they really treated artists. All of that came from there. And again, it was really a mindset from right then and there to say we could do better again once that internet came into play. Just think how old we're talking. Any what internet was just being born and we really didn't even have a clue what it was. Napster was created. We had no clue why we were getting pirated and couldn't make the money that we was making. All these things were happening and I'm a, I'm a student to all businesses, all games, once I hear and see what we're doing. And one of the read things that I was a student to was to listen to a guy named, uh, who created Facebook? Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg. Who helped him create it? The guy who had Napster, uh, Sean Parker, uh, the next guy. These are all guys very influential in my decision-making process. Uh, Steve Jobs comes to Universal and says, we want all your music and we'll pay you a percentage of all your music. And at the time, Doug Morris was like, please get out my office. <laughs> yeah, but it's the, reason, it's the reason we pay 30 cents on every dollar without them doing anything to in uh, Spotify, Apple Music, all these companies take 30 cents on your money. Why? Because Steve Jobs was like, oh, you don't get it? Well, I'm taking 30 cents. And then he became president and then everyone followed behind him. All these other companies said, oh, he could get it, we could get it. Right. And that's what happened. But just think 
of, of a universal who pays all the money when you to say make 30%, a record. I don't mean to cut you off. Every just dollar. So, just so people can understand. Is that like a distribution fee that they <clears> take? How is it 30%? We're talking about Spotify. Streaming, streaming number. This is a streaming number. So 30 cents. So if you did 100% of all the money generated, let's say 96% is all streaming dollar today. So that 96% of every dollar you generate, 30 cents goes to I, Apple, iTunes, right? Well, uh, Apple Music, you know, that's Spotify. The they negotiate with the labels. Yeah. And that's what you lose today. And there's no getting around it. It's at today, at this present day, there's no really getting around that part. Right. Um, they're they're going to take that. But that stems from him trying to do a real deal, not knowing what the right business was to do. Right. And then they took it and said, all right, you don't want to do this deal? Well, you're going to still have to come to me. You're still going to pay your artists and make all their music. You're going to do all their videos. And then you're going to give it to me for free and pay me 30 cents on, on top of end, that. On the back On end. top of that. Oof. Yeah. And that's the deals we live with today because of that. That was what I, you know, ignorance, you know. Because they, they couldn't see what was coming. You know, people pay me consultant. Not because I'm going to save them. It's because I help them so they don't make mistakes. And if you don't understand that part of business, I'm sorry, but that's the reality. The, that, that part of making that mistake costs you millions of dollars or it could cost you your business. I tell everyone, I went to Harvard. I went to, I went to Cornell, all the Ivy League schools. No, not because I went to school, because I lost that type of money. And that was my education. Right. We didn't know what to do. We just lost the money. I was dealing with all these predators, <laughs> lawyers, uh, you know, uh, executives, uh, you know, CEOs of record labels and things of that nature that was really preying on your money. Why and you didn't understand how you made your money. A question I want to ask you real quick because you mentioned lawyers in that, and I want to explain. Again. Yeah, I got beef with all lawyers except they... for Brian Robinson, <laughs> and I even shout out Ron Sweeney. So, no problem. Talk about you know real quick uh, when you're going in, as far as how the lawyers how they complicate these contracts and the verbiage and the words that they put in those contracts. So and, man, you 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 are right on point with everything because that is, you know, the complication of those contracts is why most. Uh, mostly every artist don't understand the deals they're in because of the complication of a contract and then not understanding what really the rights of why does a record make money? What's the reason a record makes money? And not understanding that point as an artist. You just know you make a record and that's all you know. And if it gets played here or people buy it, you're going to make money, but you still don't know how you, what type of money you'll make based on that contract right. and you know if you worked at mcdonald's you would know exactly i work 40 hours i get 10 dollars an hour my fucking check better say 400 bucks at the end of the week or i'm coming back right. and saying hey you missing something here and that's the problem with artists with the music industry. The, in the industry they do not know how they get paid they have to rely on an accountant a lawyer and it becomes very uh what's the right word for it you're you're in someone's power and control and you never want to be in that situation because ultimate power corrupts absolutely absolute power corrupts absolutely. absolutely so just imagine someone has absolute power knowing you don't know that's why you see all the unbelievable lawsuits all the time from artists to lawyers to managers because they had no clue how they got paid and that person who had the absolute power was basically taking advantage of them so you can't you created adventure music to try to transparency and, and strip away a lot of that power well that's the transparency that's why it's so important that venture music i want full transparency for artists i want them to know exactly where they make their money from i want them to know how they make money and i also want to know how i make money because then they can't deprive you if you're entitled to something you want people to know that's what i'm supposed to get right. again and if you don't want to do that there's a door, you walk out it, and you leave because I have no control over him. But there is a price to pay or a toll for all these different uh, things. And everyone has a different way of making you pay that toll. Every company, how else can they survive as well? Right. right? Um, 
And I fear, I, I just feel I have the most fear uh, told, let's say, for artists and transparency. I want them to know they could get a real person. They talk to someone. It's not a computer, right? Um, but I think when you launch the company, you also did something different where a lot of these companies, besides being a... Uh, I think there was only CD Baby and TuneCore before you. Early on. So. Before you. And, but you did something <clears throat> that um, might have been a little different. Distro but, Kid had just started. Uh, but the difference, I think, with Adventure Music is you hit the road. Yeah. You went and kind of spoke <laughs> to the people. That's and, my secret sauce. Yeah, and did a seminar. And, and then That's my secret of, sauce, the road, because they can't, everyone that I talk to, all those executives, they call me and, and they'll be like, Chris, how are you doing this? Why are you doing right. it? Right. More, more than anything, why are you doing it? Because I said, because my people need me. They need to hear me. They need to know that I'm here and I exist. So I want to go into those hoods, USA. You don't have to look for me. I'm pulling up on you. Right. But it's your job to, when you know I'm in town, come and hear what I'm talking about. Come see what we're doing. Come get an understanding of what's really going on with what I'm doing versus whatever you're doing and understand your business better. That's all I ask. And, you know, I, I have no animosity with any distribution company. Good luck. God bless. Like I said, until I see them offering things that have the value of real value for artists. Uh, again, I know there's companies right now doing crypto. They are, it is a great offer. I promise you. In another few years, it'll be the right offer. It's not right right now. You know, but it's, the it's futuristic the thinking and I'm all for it. I think the situation <clears throat> that we have now in that whole blockchain world is that our hip hop community is not, I don't know how in tune they are with that. They already have a situation getting paid just on the regular aspect of digital money and Spotify collective royalties. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to add a more confusion. A crypto blockchain here. Do you want to get paid in crypto? Very few people understand that, right? So I think that even though it's great. If they can't go to the bodega and buy a fucking loaf of bread, some milk and eggs so they can feed their family, it's still not here yet. Right. It's not real yet. Exactly. Once that day comes and you could take that crypto and go buy your milk, your eggs, your bread, and they accept it and no problem, or go buy some clothes at Macy's or wherever the hell you buy your, your clothes, and they're taking it, then you're in the game with this business. And I'm not telling you not to pay attention. I'm saying, no, pay attention now. Understand it as best you can. Just realize the timing of any success is all about timing. And we it's just not the right time yet. It's coming. Right. It's coming. Absolute coming. Yeah, no, definitely. You know? So, yeah, I know. I mean, adventure brings that to the table. That whole touring aspect. I know you've gone to a bunch of cities we went into. And we, how many how many yeah. artists we didn't speak to? Every, every from uh, South by South. But I wanted, to, I wanted to touch with you, De Niro, because I have you with me. Right. You're also my Latin president for Adventure Music. Definitely. And understand, I remember the first day. I'll never forget the first day we actually first met. We have so many connections together, which yeah. is crazy. And we finally meet at Dykeman Park that first day. Because of Two-Tone. Two-Tone calls two -tone. me. Like Shout out Two-Tone, man. Says, hey, do you know about digital distribution? I said, listen, I don't, I don't need no fucking digital distribution. He said, yo, you never shut the phone. Listen to me, bro. He says, I got Chris Goddard. He's looking for someone to help him with the land. Right, and so, got yeah. a company. So you got, I said, all right. So that's how we met. I went out to meet you out at, at Dykeman. Dykeman. But and you know, Mike. you know, and look, I had Ralphie Mercado. Yes. I had Mikey uh, Ricon. Yes. You know, Dominican Power. Dominican so Power, Mike. I had Latin, but I was like, I need somebody. And when we, sp when me and you spoke, you know, there's a, there's certain things that just happen, chemistry wise, yes. connection, just a vibe, an energy, whatever you want to call it. And right after we spoke, I was like, I got him. I right. got the guy I wanted. I mean, it was a blessing at the same time. So I kind of been independent my whole life. So I've never really associated with, with, with uh, anyone who's trying to rape and pillage artists. So I right. was never. So when I realized that that's not what you was trying to do, that you've never been about that, obviously. But with this that new venture, with Adventures, was about empowering the artists, letting them know, look, this is where the game is going. Because that's all you've always been ahead of it. Say, hey, look, this is where the game is going. This is what I want to do. And <clears throat> as I do it here, we can also educate and empower Latinos as we learn and we go. And that's kind of what we've done. We've kind of 
you know, even with today, as we begin this podcast and this journey of giving y'all the business, it's kind of what Chris's motto is try shit, right? Continue to to build and grow and, and, and try things. So I think that as we as we embark in this new 2022 and we keep building, I think Adventures continues to grow. I think uh, COVID kind of hit us hard in 2000 and, and, and late 19 and 20 mm-hmm. because we kind of had to shut down, the whole country shut down. And, and that touring component with Adventure brings that we out into every city and you can feel us, touch us, and we're at events and, and, uh, and we're giving out distribution deals. And I think that is something that, that's going to continue now this spring and summer. But it, I think that's what Adventure brings because Chris Scott can show up in your city anytime. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do. This doesn't stop here. 